Hey y'all, welcome back to A Dinosaur in the Library. I'm Dawn and I'm here to give a very short and quick little book review of a book that I read several weeks ago. Um, and I've been meaning to do it for a while and just kept forgetting and kept forgetting and I'm completely scatterbrained lately. So, because I just did a book haul also. That video will be going up either next week or soon um, because I've been letting those, I've been, just been letting those stack up and uh, I have a pretty good number of books. Um, but so the book I want to talk about today is The Short and Tragic Life of Robert Peace, a brilliant young man who left Newark for the Ivy League by Jeff Hobbs. This is the cover. And I have been seeing this book for quite some time. Um, it was published, it's not a new book um, by any means. It is from, and the pages don't want to turn today. Uh, this was the paperback uh, came out in 2015, but the, the original book came out in 2014. So it's a couple of years old at this point. Um, but the basic story is this young man on the front cover here, uh, Robert Peace. He grew up in the really rough, really poverty stricken um, area outside of Newark known as in a, a neighborhood known as Ill Town and I got this book because what I thought this was going to be about was the difficulties that people from lower income families have when they go to the Ivy League when they go to college in general and to some extent that was there um and I really did enjoy that bit of it but for the most part, this was a story of his life. And I found that really interesting. Let me say that up front. Um, I gave it either one or two stars on Goodreads. And I'll get to why in just a second. Um, it is not actually that the book is poorly written. Um, the author writes very well. Um, but the author is uh, was Robert's uh, roommate at Yale. And so... He comes from a very different background than Robert. Um, well, I, he goes by, they call him Rob. So Rob, um, again, comes from a very low-income family. His father um, was imprisoned uh, early on in his life for a murder that Rob never believed he committed. And his father maintained that he did not. Um, and... So it was just him and his mother, and his mother did a pretty darn good job of raising him, from what I can tell. Um, she busted her ass to put him through school. She got him into, you know, a private Catholic school that was supposed to be an excellent, excellent school. And it was for Robert. It was, um, it got him into things like water polo. It was a school, I'm going to put this book down. Um, it was a school that was originally quite an affluent school in the area, but as the neighborhood slowly deteriorated, so did the school. So it became less of an affluent uh, Catholic institution and more of just a private school in that area that people could send their kids to. So Robert got into the school and it was an excellent school. And if you, and I know it's nonfiction, so I, but I don't want to spoil it for anybody. So if you don't want to hear any kind of spoilers about his life or about the book, you can stop listening now because I think I'm probably going to spoil it a little bit. Uh, but if you don't mind that with nonfiction books, please hang around. So he gets into this Catholic school. There's a lot of things prior to this, obviously, but he gets into the Catholic school. He starts doing really well, but he also gets involved in drug dealing. And it's mainly to make, it, it's to make money. He doesn't do it because he's a pothead or anything like that. He just really desperately needs the money. He needs some way to make a lot of money so that he can help his mom out um, and so that he can have money himself. And, you know, that's why a lot of people in lower income areas who do sell drugs, that's why they do it. They don't do it because they're degenerates or anything like that. They do it because it's an easy way to make money in that area. So he sells the drugs um, so that he can have money for things and things like this. Well, a very wealthy alumnus of the high school um, ends up paying for him to go to Yale. And so he does. And he goes to Yale and he ends up, you know, graduating with this like massively complicated. I can't even remember what it was. It's like microbiology and the very science, very, very difficult track in the pre-med area. You got to be like high level smart to do that. And he absolutely was. Um, unfortunately, after he left Yale, uh, well, he took a small vacation. He went to South America um, and had, you know, 
a good vacation after Yale. But the entire time he was at Yale, he did continue to sell drugs um, to make money because mm -hmm. while his school was paid for, he really didn't have um, access to a lot of money otherwise. So he wanted to make money. So he started selling weed to his classmates and, you know, he saved up a pretty good bit of money along with his job and his paychecks. And, you know, he decided to take a vacation. So he went to South America, left the money with people that he thought he could trust. And when he came back, uh, his money was no longer there. So he was starting from zero coming back instead of starting from a pretty cushioned area and from an area where he could help his mom out. Um, which is part of the, the entire intent of him doing that is he really wanted to give his mom some money and help her out. And, um, so he started getting more heavily into dealing and doing it a lot more than he used to, uh, because he had to recoup his, his losses. And tragically he ended up being murdered and, uh, he was really young when he got killed and he was only, I think a year younger than I, either a year younger or a year older than I am. I can't remember the exact year. Um, I think he was a year younger, a year or two younger than me, but it was just, it's a, it's a tragic story. And I am really glad that I got to know his story. Um, you don't always hear stories when they happen like that. Um, you don't always get to know the people. Um, they're just someone who got murdered in Newark and I may never have heard about it. And it's a tragedy and I feel so much for his family that that happened. Um, they had such high hopes for him. But, you know, the thing to take away from this is not that, you know, he had all these opportunities and he wasted them. He didn't, you know, he took advantage of Yale. He got a really, dis you know, a really distinguished degree. He was working on applications um, according, you know, to, to what, Everyone says he was working on graduate school applications at the time of his murder. So he really wanted to, you know, do something. He wanted to become a doctor. He actually worked in a lab on cancer, um, you know, looking at how it developed and things like this because his father dies of brain cancer in prison before um, they can do anything with an appeal um, or a second appeal. And uh, so he really was, you know, using the opportunities he had. And a lot of times when people... Um, you know, especially people from minority groups who are from low income areas, a lot of times when things like this happen, racist people or stupid people or people who just don't know will make the assumption that this kind of thing happened because they just didn't try to get out of it. And that's not true. You work with what you have. Sometimes you have opportunities and you use them to their fullest and you still can't get out. Um, and that just happened to be the case here. He had some bad luck and he, you know, got stuck, um, you know, doing things that maybe weren't the best choices, but they were the choices that he thought he had to make at the time and he was doing his best. And, you know, I enjoyed learning his story. And the book was fairly well written in terms of how it was written, like the structure of writing. Um, but I have a distinct issue with the tone uh, particularly toward the end of the book. So as I said, the author is, uh, was Rob's roommate at Yale and he did come from a very different family. He is, uh, he is white and he was from an affluent family. So he says himself, you know, at some point he's really not sure how well he knew him. And on one level, I kind of am okay with him saying that and then going back and trying to learn about him and talking to his family and friends. But on the other hand, I feel like if he felt he knew him so little, I'm not sure I would have taken on the responsibility of getting the story out there um, if I wasn't sure I knew him. However, that isn't as much of my, that isn't the biggest problem um, I have with this. There's just a couple of places where it is a book by a white, it just, it boils down to being a book by a white man about a black man who sold drugs and got murdered. Um, and I think you guys will understand what I'm saying by that. Um, it's not like that throughout the entire book, but especially toward the end when Rob is getting much heavier into drugs, um, or into selling drugs and, um, right up to his murder, the tone there is very much that way to me. And, uh, the rich alumni that are alumnus that helped him get into Yale and, and, you know, or not helped him get into it, but paid his way through Yale. Um, 
he got into Yale all on his own. Uh, but the, the man who paid for his education, um, you know, was told that he got murdered. And just the way that the author chose to write that, it's, it's like, you know, that the alumnus wasn't surprised or something. And it's like, you know, I don't know that that was the best way to put that. And if that was the truth, then I think there should have been some discussion of that. I think there should have been some conversation about the fact that it is highly problematic that the alumnus didn't find that surprising um, because I was surprised. Uh, obviously, I knew that he died. The, sh the name of the book is The Short and Tragic Life of Robert Peace. I had no idea he was murdered I until he actually got murdered. I kind of saw it coming a couple, you know, a little bit before that, just, you know, or, or you know, it gets mentioned. Um, and then you start seeing, okay, well, maybe these choices aren't the best, but they're what he had to do. And then you start worrying for the boy. Uh, you're like, this young man is, is there's something going to happen. But, you know, I would never, even if I had read the back, um, where it says he was murdered. Because I didn't read the back when I first picked this up. You know, I wouldn't have said I wasn't surprised. Um, that just smacks of, oh, that's just another minority from a poor neighborhood getting shot for drugs attitude. And that's not cool. That is 100% not cool. So when I finished the book, it took me a, a little while to figure out what it was that I had a problem with. I started, you know, I sat there for an hour or so just thinking about the book and kind of flipping back through it and looking at it and trying to decide, you know, what was it about this book that bothered me so? And I finally came up with all those reasons. So then I go on Goodreads to, you know, enter my you know, put it on my shelf and whatever. And I started reading some of the other reviews and I re realized that there were a lot of really low reviews. There was one that was really good, um, but it turns out she's a friend of the author's. And then I started reading some of the low reviews and it turns out a few of them are from people who actually knew Rob and were saying that some of the information in the book is not accurate, um, saying that parts of it are exaggerated, parts of it are, you know, there are gaps. So I have a real issue with the book. Um, you know, obviously I didn't know any of that prior to reading it and I'm kind of glad I didn't. It would have colored what I thought about it, um, from the get go. But so I, I developed this opinion specific, you know, just because I read it. Um, if you've read this book, I would really like to hear what you have to say about it. I would love to know if you enjoyed the book or whether you found it problematic as well. Um, but yeah, if you, you know, have read the book and you haven't read the reviews on Goodreads, I would suggest going over there and checking them out. It's a really interesting read, does, whether or not you liked the book or not. And I'm not trying to change your mind about whether you liked it or not. I'm just saying it was a really interesting um, look at, you know, what people who knew him say, um, as opposed to what is in this book. So yeah, that's all I had. Um, look out for that book haul video, which is really long. I think it ended up being like 24 minutes. So I apologize for that. Y'all might want to get a snack before you sit down to watch that one. Um, but other than that, that is all I've got to say today. Again, if you've read that one, let me know in the comments down below if you liked it. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.